Okay, hello everyone and uh, welcome to this live stream. Thank you everyone for joining. I hope you are doing well. Uh, my name is Clarence and uh, I am a visual artist from Albania. Uh, I've started the challenge of creating something uh, every day since uh, summer of 2017. And although my style is asso associated with uh, styles like trippy, retro and uh, glitchy, uh, I like to call my work uh, experimental and uh, because I just like to play around with, uh, with uh, softwares and different techniques uh, and try to uh, evolve my style. So yeah, this is uh, what I will try to do today. I'm going to show you uh, one of my daily works. So uh, yeah, I'm going to start in Photoshop and then uh, move to After Effects. So um, yeah, now uh, I'm going to share my screen so we can start uh, the process. So um, yeah, I think you can see Photoshop now. And by the way, uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Uh, first of all, I'm going to show you uh, where I get the inspiration from. As I said, this is uh, one of the normal process processes of my daily work. Usually I go to Pinterest to look for inspiration and uh, this is one of the images that I found. You can see the, yeah, the title right here and the artist, just so, so I can give credits. And uh, yeah, I put all the images that I find inspiring in a, in a folder, and this is one of them. So I thought I could, uh, I could use that as an inspiration to, to create something similar in Photoshop and, uh, and After Effects. And I know that this kind of, uh, liquid uh, trippy style is trendy now, so I thought I could uh, do something similar. So the first thing that I would need to uh, to do something like this is uh, is a portrait picture. So I went to pexels.com and uh, I found these two images that I thought would look um, yeah would adjust would be the right images for um, for what I need to do. So. Um, I think I'm going to start with this one and then, um, yeah, if we have time, I'm going to also try uh, to animate this one. As I said, we are going to use Photoshop and After Effects, so it will be an animation. Um, so yeah, the first thing that I need to do is just uh, copy the head from this image and paste it to a new document. So I'm just selecting it using the, the rectangular market tool. And by the way, I'll try to explain uh, everything as you haven't used uh, Photoshop before or you are a beginner. So uh, anyway, if you have any questions, let me know. So I'll just uh, go to the toolbar here, go to the rectangular market tool and uh, do the selection. Now I'm going to go to edit copy or just control C and I'm going to create a new uh, document Usually I go with this size, 4,000 with uh, 5,000 and resolution 72. And I go with this size because uh, this is the optimal ratio for uh, Instagram pictures because I share my pictures uh, uh, every day on Instagram and I have to optimize them for, um, for that. So in this case, I'm going to reduce it because it's going to be an animation. And uh, since I'm going to work in After Effects, the image resolutions should be uh, smaller. So yeah, I'm just going to decrease the width and the height will be uh, decreased automatically. I'm just going to click OK, but uh, we still have the same ratio. OK, and now I'll just go to Edit uh, Paste and we have the image that we just uh, pasted. So we just copied and pasted it. So uh, yeah, the first thing that I need to do is to remove the background from, uh, from this image. So there are different ways uh, that you can do that, but I'm going to show you how I do it. First of all, yeah, I can show you that there is this object selection tool where you just uh, select and it will roughly select the object uh, that you need to uh, copy and paste. There is also the quick selection tool. Um, you can see these selections here, plus and minus, uh, that you can use to 
uh, adjust to the shape of the face. Yeah, you can go to the plus sign to increase the width of, this, of the selection. And you can go to the minus to uh, decrease the, the width of the selection. But uh, personally, I don't like this kind of, uh, this way of removing the background because if I click Control C, Control uh, V, uh, you will see that the edges are not uh, perfect. So this is why I'm going to show you another way to uh, remove the, the background. So uh, yeah, I'll just, uh, I'll just zoom in and use the, the pen tool. And yeah, I'll just click on a point and click on another point by holding and dragging. So this way I can create a curve. And by the way, I'm just seeing some questions, but I'm going to answer them in a few. Um, yeah, as always, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, which course is he demonstrating? This is uh, this is a kind of work that I'm doing that is uh, similar to one of the projects that will be um, available soon on domestic. I think not. I think that it will be. I don't. I just don't know when. Um, so yeah, I'll try to explain the same uh, similar technique. So now I'm just uh, trying to uh, select the shape of the face. And as you can see, I'm just clicking on a point and uh, holding and dragging the, the mouse to adjust to the shape of the face. And at one point I let go of that so I can move on to the other point. And uh, yeah, as always, it doesn't have to be perfect because it will be distorted anyway. Okay. Yeah, the pen tool uh, usually takes some time, but I just feel more comfortable with it because I know that the result will be will be good. And also I chose this picture because I think it is easy to remove the background from because I didn't want to spend uh, too much time with the process of removing the background since it is not very exciting to see. But yeah, if I had the like if I had a female model, I would have to work more with the removal of the background since uh, because of the hair part. And usually when I when there is the hair element, um, I don't use the pen tool on that part because yeah, there are better tools who can do the job uh, for that. But as I said, in this case, um, I chose this picture since it is easy to remove the background from. Okay, now in the end, uh, I just need to close the path. Let's zoom in. So if I go to pen tool. Uh, you can see that I'm just uh, clicking on the point where we started and there is this uh, circle icon that shows and when I click on it, the path is closed and we need to copy this, uh, this area that we selected. So I go again to pen tool, uh, right click, make selection and the feather radius should be zero. I'll click OK and now this part is uh, selected. So I'll just go to edit, uh, copy, edit, uh, paste. And now we have this as separate layer. So I'm going to uncheck both uh, the previous layers. And now actually I'm going to make a copy of this just in case uh, I need the original one. So I'm going to hold Alt key and uh, drag it up to make a copy or you can just uh, go to select, uh, edit, copy and edit paste. But yeah, that's the shortcut for uh, copying the layer, holding Alt key and dragging up. So now I will just try to uh, adjust it to this uh, document that I have. So I'll click Control T. And uh, yeah, to make sure to keep the ratio, uh, 
we need to check this icon right here. If I don't check it, if I let's say if I uncheck it and we get this kind of distortion, we don't need that. So I'm going to check that to keep the ratio. And I'm just going to make it uh, smaller so we can have something minimal uh, in the middle of uh, our document. So yeah, let's just click enter. And now the next step would be to distort this uh, image and make it colorful. I'm going to show you once again the image that I found as an inspiration on Pinterest. And uh, you can see that there is this uh, removal of the eyes. And I'll try to do that. I'm going to make another copy of the image. Again, I have that. Uh, I do that just in case uh, I need the original one. But uh, yeah, to remove these eyes, we can use the this tool right here, Spot Healing Brush Tool. Yeah, in case you don't see it, you can right click and uh, pick the first one. And uh, we go to the size of the of the brush and I'm going to adjust it. I'm going to make it smaller so uh, it is like uh, the size of the uh, this black part right here. I, forgot how it is called. So uh, I'm going to decrease the size. And the hardness, I think it is better to uh, 0%. <clears throat> and I'm just going to uh, colorize that. Now you can see how it is blended because uh, it gets the it gets the the color of the environment. And if I undo, you will see that only this area is black. The other one has the, the skin color. So yeah, let's try it again. Hello, uh, Raulito, hello. OK, so I'm just clicking and uh, trying to blend the eye. Of course, this doesn't have to be perfect because uh, we are going to make more adjustments. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm doing the, the same thing on the other side. And you can see this kind of distortion on this side. So I'm going to use the, the pen tool again to remove it. Okay, I'll just close the path, make selection, click OK, and uh, uh, delete. So, yeah, now I think I can make more adjustments here by using the spot healing brush tool, and I can decrease the, the size of it. Okay, I think I can try the same thing for the nose. I don't know if it will look good, but let's try it. Okay, I'm just trying to make it look flat. Okay, you can see that uh, it is not perfectly done, but uh, that doesn't matter because it will be distorted anyway. The, the whole point was to, to uh, remove the eyes or to blend them uh, with, uh, with the skin. <clears throat> so now I'm just going to try and make it colorful. So again, I'm going to make another copy of the layer. And uh, 
To make it color colorful, I'm going to work with adjustments. I can start uh, with adjustments like brightness and contrast and move on with the other ones. So the adjustment layers are right here. And let's start with brightness and contrast. You can see that a new layer is created um, when I apply the brightness and contrast. And first of all, I'm going to add a background just so I can show you something. Okay, just added this gradient background for now. Okay, and yeah, you can see that when I increase the contrast and the brightness, uh, it, it affects both uh, layers, the, the main layer and the background. You can see the difference. So I want this layer, this uh, adjustment layer to affect only uh, the main image. So to do that, uh, I can go to layer, create clipping mask. And you can see this arrow that is created, which means that uh, the adjustment layer will be applied only on the layer below. Yeah, you can see that it doesn't uh, affect the, the background. In this case, we will have a transparent background, but just wanted to show you that. Okay, now uh, I'm going to show you the main effect that I use or the main adjustment uh, that I use to make the uh, portrait colorful, which is the curves. And again, it is on the layers where I've applied the clipping mask, meaning that the adjustment layer will be applied only uh, on the layer below. And here we have the curves. It has these four options, RGB, red, green, and blue. The main one is RGB, and uh, then we can move on to red, green, and blue. You can see this diagonal line, and uh, it has two points, one right here and the other one uh, right here on top. We can add more points. So if I click in the middle, let's say, we can see uh, that we have another point and I can just drag it down or move it up and you can see how it affects uh, the, the picture. So what I'm going to do now is uh, create some new points and I'm going to try to create a wavy shape and you will see how it affects the, the picture. Yeah. You can see that we have these kind of uh, iridescent colors now. And what I like to do is just uh, create new points and play around with curves just to see how it affects the, the picture. Um, I don't have a formula for, for this. So yeah, whenever I have to create a colorful portrait, I just play around with a, uh, with a curve shapes, but I've just noticed that uh, these wavy shapes uh, create that iridescent effect. This is why I'm trying it. Okay, so now that we tried the RGB, there is red, green, and blue. So I'll go to that. And yeah, you can see that I'm just creating points and uh, playing around with them. Okay, again with the green and uh, now I will go to the blue option. Okay, I think it looks nice. So we can see the, the difference here. If I check it and uh, uncheck it. Okay, I'm going to create a new adjustment layer, the hue saturation. And again, first of all, it is uh, 
on this row right here that is that has the clipping mask option. So we have the hue, saturation, and uh, the lightness. I'm going to increase the saturation, first of all, and I can also play around uh, with a hue in case I want to get a different uh, uh, color combination. So I think I'll go with that. Uh, and uh, Rahul asked, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing well, thank you. Yeah, just uh, thought about what to do during the, the live stream and uh, I think it is a nice example of what the course, what the full course will be about. So, yeah, sorry, I was just doing things automatically, but uh, I want to explain every step. So yeah, now that, I, that we have these three uh, main adjustments, I'm going to make that as one group. So I'm going to select the uh, uh, layer below. I'm going to hold shift and click the layer uh, above. And this selects also the layers in between. Now, uh, right click, I can merge layers or I can uh, click on this group icon. And now we have this as a, as a group. So yeah, let's zoom out. I'm going to make a copy of the group again, just in case I need the original one. And uh, right click, merge group. Now we have this as, uh, as one layer. So yeah, you can see right here that it has, that it has the adjustment layers on the group. But to simplify it, I have it as, uh, as one layer now. And now I'm going to show you some some blending options that uh, that you can use uh, to make different color variations. So yeah, first of all, I just made a copy yeah of the original picture, so I have it here. And here's the layer on top, which is the colorful one, colorful one. And I can try uh, different blending modes to see how it looks like. Yeah, here are the blending modes, uh, by the way. We can start with normal and I can try all the other ones. Thank you, Rahul, thank you. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, just trying these uh, different blending modes, and I think the color option looks uh, looks nice. We can see the difference from the normal uh, option. Yeah, it is softer, I think. So now I'm just going to make a copy of both layers by holding Alt key, and I'm going to merge layers. And now again, we have this as, as just one layer. So as you can see, uh, whenever I apply adjustments or do different editings, at one point I try to simplify everything. So in this case, we have just uh, one layer. And now I'm going to show you one last thing before we move to After Effects. Uh, when I zoom in, you can see that there are some kind of uh, pixelated areas. That is because of all the adjustments that we have used. And uh, to fix that, usually I go to oil paint. So I can go to filter, uh, stylize, and oil paint. And yeah, we have this. Uh, we have these options here. First, uh, usually you have the lighting uh, checked, but I don't like that. Yeah, I want something smooth, so I uncheck the lighting uh, uh, all the time. I don't use it, so I just play around with uh, with the brush options. Usually, I left I leave them on ten, but in this case, if I leave them all on ten, uh, the the face will not be visible. So for that reason, I can decrease the stylization and the cleanliness. Yeah, and this way we can get less uh, distortion. Uh, 
Okay, you can see the difference when I check and uncheck the preview. And yeah, now uh, before we move to After Effects, I'm going to show you what I have in mind to do. So let's make uh, a copy of it. And if you don't like the colors, you can just go to Image Adjustment uh, Hue Saturation and change it here. But we can also do that in uh, in After Effects. So yeah, I'm not going to change it. And the tool that we are going to use in uh, in After Effects is the Liquify tool. So I'm going to show you because it is also uh, available in uh, Photoshop, but in After Effects you can also animate it. <coughs> okay, so I just went to the Liquify tool and the main option is this Forward Warp tool and this Twirl Clockwise tool. Let's start with the Forward Warp tool and uh, on the uh, right side we have the size and the pressure. You can see the size by uh, seeing this circle on the screen. Yeah, I can decrease the size. And you can see the pressure by clicking and holding. Yeah, that's uh, the, the pressure. I'm going to undo that. And if I decrease the pressure, you can see the, the difference. I think the pressure uh, should be 100. And yeah, I'm just going to click and drag to create this kind of uh, distortion. OK. And I can also use this, uh, this other tool to make it more wavy. Again, there is the size and the, the pressure. I'm going to decrease the size. I need to decrease the pressure too. Okay. Yeah, that's just so I can show you what uh, I have in mind to do in After Effects. So I'm just going to cancel that. And actually, one main, uh, one last thing that I that I just thought that I can do is to add more colors. So I'll go to uh, select color range, and uh, here we have these options uh, like red, yellow, green, and so on. I'll just go to sampled colors, which means that I can click somewhere and it will select the colors that are similar to it. You can see the white color right here uh, represents the color that I uh, selected. And by playing around with the fuzziness, I can uh, decide about the range of the colors that are selected. OK. Now that we have this selection, I can just create a new uh, layer. And I'll go to the Gradient tool. Here are some gradients that I've created before, so I'm just going to apply it. Now Control D. And uh, to change the colors of the gradient, I can click Control U, which is the shortcut for hue saturation. OK. Yeah, you can see the difference right here. I think I'm going to keep it with colors. So now I'm just going to 
uh, export this as a PNG so I can open it in, in uh, Photoshop, in After Effects, sorry. So I'll go to File, Save As, uh, and uh, let's just create a new folder. And now on save as type, I'm going to put it as uh, PNG. I'm going to click save, click OK. And uh, you need to make sure that you don't have a, a background. So yeah, we need a transparent uh, background. And uh, yeah, now I'm going to move to After Effects. So I'm going to open it now. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen in Photoshop, and I'm going to move to uh, to After Effects. OK, so now we are, I think we are in, in After Effects. Yeah. OK. Um, OK, did you try new Photoshop? Yeah, I haven't tried it yet, actually. I know that Adobe Max is uh, is happening now, but uh, yeah, I haven't had time to, to see the new features. I thought I could uh, wait for the whole event to finish and then uh, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to see all the features because I know that uh, after they finish the event, there is uh, always some some tutorials on YouTube that talk about that. So yeah, I'm just, uh, I'll just check it after a few days, I think. Okay, so in uh, in After Effects, uh, I'll go to the project section. I'm going to double click and uh, yeah, I'll just go to the folder where I have the, the image and I'm going to open it. And yeah, by the way, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Now in After Effects, uh, to create a new composition, we can click on this uh, icon right here and we can set the width, the height, the duration and stuff like that. Or we can just drag this picture to the new composition and the new composition will, will be created uh, based on the size uh, of, the, of the picture. So, now I'll right click composition setting and we can see that the width and the height is the same as the width and the height of the picture. Uh, I just need to change the duration. Maybe I can make it six seconds. Yeah. I'll just click uh, OK. And uh, now if I click play, nothing happens. Here is the timeline because we just have a, a picture. And uh, to animate it, we need to go to the liquify effect. Here are the effects and presets. In case you don't see them, you can go to window and uh, uh, make sure to check the effects and preset uh, option. Okay, I'm just going to click and drag and apply it on the layer of the picture. And you can see that we have similar or the same tools as they were in uh, in uh, Photoshop. The first one, forward the warp tool, and the third one, uh, I think it was called twirl clockwise tool. Uh, so yeah, now the only difference here is that you can animate it. Now to do the, first of all, before I show you to, how to do the animation, uh, we are going to see the options here. Again, the brush size and the brush pressure. We saw in Photoshop that uh, it looked better when the brush pressure was uh, 100. So I'm going to do the same thing here. And the brush size, I'm just going to uh, adjust it. I think 100 is, is good. I can see the circle here. Yeah, I can test it. Okay, so even when I do this uh, and click play, you can see that nothing happens. I mean, it is not an animation. So let's undo it. Okay, to undo, you can just go to edit, undo or control C. 
And to do the animation, we need to animate these distortion options, uh, distortion mesh, uh, offset percentage. So we need to set a keyframe here. So I just need to click on these icons and make sure that I'm on the start of it. And uh, now I can just move on uh, at the second number one on the timeline. And now I can uh, go to forward warp tool and just start uh, distorting the, the image. Okay, now let's go uh, from the beginning and let's click uh, play. And you can see the, the distortion that is animated, but it stops on uh, second one because this is when where there is the last keyframe. I can move on to the last uh, frame and I can keep uh, doing this, this distortion like that. Just clicking, holding, and dragging down. Okay. Um, now this is this is a kind of. Uh, thing that you just test and see how it looks like. If you don't like it, uh, you try again. So I'm just going to click play and see how it looks like. Usually this kind of effect uh, takes some time to load. So yeah, we need to be patient with it. Okay, if you want the animation to be faster, uh, I'm going to show you how you can do that. So we need to click on this uh, kind of arrow right here, go to the effects, uh, liquify, and you can see these uh, shapes, which represents the, the point where you uh, distorted the image, where you applied the effect. As you remember, we started from zero, from uh, the first frame, then we distorted it in the first second and then on the sixth uh, uh, second. So I'll just, now to make it faster, you can just drag this somewhere right here and the transition will happen faster. Okay, and you can see that it stops right here. So I'm going to move to the last frame and try to distort it again. Okay, let's click play and see what we get. Okay, I'm just watching it several times just to uh, get a better sense of how it looks like. I think I'm going to apply uh, more distortions in the end. Okay, I'm going to see how it looks like and uh, then I think I'm also going to use this other tool. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I think um, I think it looks nice. Maybe what I can try next is this third tool that I mentioned. So um, yeah, I'll go again to this keyframe and apply it. I need to select this tool and yeah, I'll just try to make it uh, more wavy. So again, I'm just clicking and uh, and dragging. Okay, I'll go to the end and yeah, let's see what I can do with this tool. Okay, now I'm going to click play again and uh, see how it looks like. Yeah, as I said, usually this takes some time to load, but I'll just wait and see it in the real speed. Okay, I think it looks nice. I don't know if you have any feedback, uh, let me know. There is also this other option where uh, if you want to start the distortion below, there is the distortion mesh offset. Uh, this is the X, this is the Y. So you can see how you can put it below like that or just in case um, you want to change that. But in this case, I think what I will do is just uh, make some color adjustments, add a background and maybe add the, the glow effect. Um, I'm going to see how it looks if I apply the colorama effect. So I'm going to duplicate this layer by clicking Control D and uh, I'm going to apply the colorama effect and I'm just going to apply it on the layer and it shows uh, right here on the effects control. And again, if I click play, you can see that the colors uh, do not change. And actually to make this faster, I'll go to the layer below and I'm going to uncheck the liquify so it loads faster. I'm going to do it on both of them. And uh, now on the Colorama effect, you can see all these options, but uh, I think the one that we need to change is the input. Input phase on the phase shift, we can see that we can change the colors here. So like we did with, with the distortion, I'm going to animate it. So I'll go to the phase shift and uh, let's go to the end. And I'm going to just increase that and make a full uh, rotation. Okay, maybe it uh, plays slow, so maybe I can put it on two. Okay. And by the way, uh, here's the quality. So if I put it on full, you can see it. Uh, better, but it is just so it loads faster. And uh, yeah, now I can bring back the liquify effect. Okay, and we can see what we get. Again, I think I need to decrease the uh, the quality just so it loads faster. So yeah, I'm just showing you different effects that you can apply to get something uh, interesting. Um, 
but yeah, you can choose to not use the, the colorama effect. Okay. And the other option would be to blend it with the original one, like we did in Photoshop, where we had the blending modes. They are also available here in After Effects. And uh, let's try the color blending mode. Okay. So if you like it like that, you can keep it uh, like that with a blending mode of color. But I think I'm going to keep the original one and I'm just going to add an adjustment layer. Uh, so I'll create a new, yeah, let me show you how you can create a new adjustment layer. You can just go to this uh, area right here, right click, new adjustment layer and uh, on the adjustment layer, you can apply different effects that will be uh, that will affect the layers below the same way as they did in Photoshop. So I'm going to apply the color balance, hue, lightness, and saturation uh, adjustment. I'm going to apply it on the adjustment layer here. And uh, yeah, if I click play, you can see that nothing happens. I'm going to increase the saturation and animate the hue. I'll click on the hue, go to the end, and I'm going to make full rotation cycle. And yeah, this is what we get. Again, I put the quality to a quarter just so it loads faster, but if I put it on full, uh, again, you can see, you can see how it looks like. Okay, so now I think I'm just going to make some final color adjustments. So if you have any questions about anything, just uh, just let me know. I'm going to uh, I'm going to see the chat. While I'm just waiting for this to load, so we can see the the final animation. Although, as I said, I'm going to make some other uh, adjustments. Okay, yeah, I think it looks nice. So now I'm going to continue with some uh, other adjustments. First of all, I need to create a new uh, background. Uh, so I'll go to new solid and I'll just click okay. The, the color doesn't matter. I'll just put it on the background. And now we have a, a, gray, uh, a gray background. But usually I've noticed that with these kind of uh, animations, uh, a minimal background look uh, looks nice. So I've tried uh, to use grids, and I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to duplicate this layer by clicking Control D, and I'll go to the effects and presets, and just search for grid. Okay, and actually I'm going to delete the background because I want it to be black, not uh, dark gray. So I'll just switch it to black and click OK. OK, now on the layer where, where we have applied the, uh, the grid, I'm going to just uh, play around with the settings. First of all, I want these lines to be uh, thinner, I think it's called. So yeah, I'll just put the border to 1. I can also put it on 0 0.5, but I'll see. And to make these uh, rectangular shapes smaller, I need to play around with the corners. Here's the X and here's the Y. OK, I think it looks uh, nice. I can also try to make the border uh, 0 0.6 or something like that.
Okay, so now I'm just going to uh, add the glow effect. So I'll go to the glow and under the stylized, there is this option. Okay, so we have all these options like glow threshold, glow radius, intensity, and uh, we can see the effect that it has, first of all. But to change it, we can play around with, the, with these uh, three options, threshold, radius, and intensity. Um, yeah, we can see how it affects the, uh, the picture. And I'm just going to adjust it based on what I like. So there are no rules here. Uh, hello, Jane. Hello. Uh, is this com yeah, yeah, that's uh, it is not released yet. So um, I don't know when it will be released, but I think soon. But it will be something on this kind of vibe of uh, when I will explain how to create like 3PFX and uh, abstract uh, animations. Okay, so now I'm just trying to uh, play around with a uh, with a glow effect. I think I need to increase the glow radius and glow intensity. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome, Jamie. Now I think, uh, yeah, the last thing would be to add some color balance adjustments. And here we have the red, green, and blue adjustments. Uh, I'm just going to uh, change them and see how it affects uh, the main animation, but I think I just want to create something more blue. Okay, yeah, you can see the, the difference. Let's click play again. And yeah, I think that would be the, the final animation. Maybe I can just uh, export it. So I'll go to the project section and go to file, export, Add to Adobe. Oh, I cannot render it here. Okay, I'll just click Control M. And here we have these three options. I'll just uh, save it in a folder. And the output module, I'm going to change the format to uh, QuickTime. Uh, click OK, and yeah, I'm just going to render it. OK, now that the render is done, um, I can just go to my uh, to the folder where I where I saved it. OK, 
Okay, I need to use another software. And yeah, that's uh, that's the, the final animation. I don't know if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Uh, what other software do you use? Uh, besides uh, Photoshop and After Effects, I use uh, Cinema, for, Cinema 4D and uh, Daz Studio, which are uh, 3D softwares. Um, I'm not really good at them, but I'm trying to learn them so I can uh, implement 3D to my work because this is something that I uh, try to do, implement uh, yeah, just trying to combine different softwares uh, to come up with something new. So yeah, to give a short answer besides uh, After Effects and Photoshop, I use Cinema 4D and uh, Daz, Daz Studio. Also Premiere Pro. Uh, how can you make the movement seem so natural? Uh, I, guess, I guess it depends on what you call natural, but I think it comes with uh, with experience. Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, like what I try to do is just just play around and see what looks good to me. But it's not like I have a formula to to make something look natural. Usually, I play around with adjustment layers to to blend everything and uh, yeah, make it look as as one thing. If if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, that's this is how how I do it. Just just trying to blend everything. Uh, how did you decide on your technique and style? Um, as I as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, my work is associated with different styles. Uh, someone calls it trippy. Someone calls it uh, for retro or glitchy or modern, but. Personally, I call it experimental because I try to play around with different techniques. And how do I decide on the technique that I want to try is based on what I like. If I like a certain style or an artist, I just uh, yeah, I just study its work and try to see um, the the way that the other person does it, try to see what softwares they use, what kind of techniques they use. And I blend it, I combine it with the other things that I know to, to come up with something new with something new. So it's always a work in progress. It's not like uh, I use just uh, just one technique. For example, in this case, I use the liquify tool, but uh, I also combined it with uh, effects like Colorama, um, or uh, the glow effect. So, in another work, maybe I use um, I use another effect. So, as I said, it is always uh, a work in progress. It's not like I use just just one technique. You you always uh, evolve. Uh, what has been your most inspiring project or client? Um, I don't I don't know. I think I think. Uh, when I get a new project, like uh, however it is, I'm excited about it, and I feel like this is the most important project that I have, and I try to uh, to give my hundred percent to it to make it look uh, good or at least uh, to me. Um, so after I finish it, there is another project, and I feel like the next one is the the most special one. So I cannot pick one because. Uh, yeah, I try to consider them all uh, important, important, but uh, I can give this answer that I like the projects uh, that give me a kind of uh, creative freedom. I mean, I need instructions, but at the same time, they trust my work and um, yeah, just give me that freedom to play around with, with whatever I like. Yeah. So, uh, did you try? Yeah. Did you try the new Photoshop uh, version? Yeah. As I said before, I haven't tried it yet. 
Uh, I think I need to download it from the Creative Cloud. Um, but I know that the Adobe Max is happening now. And uh, I've seen from the art other artists who have mentioned some new features. But personally, I haven't tried them yet, tried them yet because I've had some client works that I had to work on. But I'm just waiting for the event to finish. And then I'm going to check some, uh, some YouTube tutorials uh, from people who just uh, show what what their what new features are available uh, available and uh, I can test them and see if I can implement them uh, in my work. Uh, can I do it in elements? Mm, I don't know what I, oh elements maybe it is elements 3D and after effects but I don't know to to make this kind of work I use just Photoshop and after effects but I'm not sure about what do you refer to elements? OK, so um, I think that's it for this uh, live stream. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, I hope you have found this helpful. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the course when it is uh, available to on Domestica. So thank you for watching, and goodbye. I'm going to show you some examples. This is what we've got behind me. ¿Qué más preguntas tengo por aquí? ¿Cómo descubriste que lo tuyo?